Yes. It's a 7-0. All right. Thank you very much. All right. The next public hearing this evening is the Courthouse Village Sub-Area Plan. Ms. Ann Ducey-Ortiz, Planning Director. Of course, I have a PowerPoint. <laughs> so, um, I'm actually very happy to be uh, presenting this plan to you tonight. Um, it's, uh, we're pretty uh, pleased with how it turned out. And um, it was a collaborative effort with the Main Street Preservation Trust. Um, as you may recall, they came to the board and asked for the board to participate. Um, and the idea was we had a Fraser plan which dealt mostly with Main Street in 2010 and based on that plan the need for having a larger plan beyond Main Street was um, was identified and, and so the Main Street Preservation Trust took the initiative and came to the county and asked um, if we could participate with them in it. The board authorized Ms. Garten to appoint a steering committee um, and there's a list of the representatives from the steering committee. It was pretty broad based and we have several members here and I appreciate them coming. Um, it was a wonderful group of people, and um, Mr. James was, was on it, and Mr. Crisco, and we had the uh, planning commissioners, um, Mark Holthouse and Kenny Rich excuse me, Richardson's on it, on it. And we also worked with a great consultant, Milt Hurd. Um, he would have been here tonight, but we're trying to save some money um, and use him later on. But uh, um, he did a wonderful job, and he worked with the Renaissance Planning Group. So we felt like this plan really had some good um, consultants, great group of people, and. Uh, so again, I'll just quickly go through it. Um, the plan starts in um, page 84 in, in your packet, so I'm not going to go over the whole thing. Um, hopefully you've all had a chance to read it, and I did give you an update in October. Um, it started out in our current comprehensive plan. We identified two village areas, and you may recall we recently did a sub-area plan for the Gospel Point Hayes uh, village area. And so this plan started with kind of, I always call it the big red blob up in the north, and we um, worked and, and kind of honed in on what would um, be the area that ended up being part of the sub-area plan. Uh, we also looked at our current planning efforts. Again, as I mentioned, the Fraser plan, which is um, on the right there, really was more of a strategic planning to help Main Street Preservation Trust and the county identify projects for Main Street itself. Um, and again, our comprehensive <coughs> plan is, is our bigger plan for the entire county and it kind of just talks in, in very general and then we have our zoning district so we really kind of look, looked at all that um, when we started and that's kind of um, the beginning and then we uh, move forward with with being a more detailed plan this planning effort had a lot of uh, public outreach we started as you might recall with a, a meeting in May kind of just to get an idea of what people were looking to see um, in the courthouse area, and even what was the courthouse area, you know, what, you know, some people think it's just Main Street, other, others went beyond. Also, the consultant met one-on-one -on -one with several of the um, stakeholders and main property owners in the, in the courthouse area. The steering committee met monthly with a few exceptions, um, and the consultant would bring back ideas, and then we would, would talk them out with the steering committee. Uh, then we had a, another public meeting in October. Um, that kind of said, well, this is what we came, out, came up with based on all the input so far. And uh, we gathered some more input and made some modifications. And again, in October, we gave the Planning Commission and the Board updates on the, on the plan. Uh, essentially, three main concepts came out of um, all this work. Uh, economic vitality, which is something we've talked about uh, tonight earlier and um, something that's very important to the county and the courthouse area connectivity and then preservation again you know we were in a historic district um, in, right here but you know preservation went just beyond just historic preservation so again connectivity a lot of discussion about improving walkability and in and around the village and even in some new developments not only for the uh, local um, community but for increased tourism uh, to try to separate local traffic from uh, commuter traffic to improve safety and reduce congestion and emergency access and then a big thing um, not just connected you know uh, a physical connection but reconnect the village and the courthouse area with the rest of the county it is our, our main business district and our, our um, you know county seat so kind of trying to you know make it part of the county you know with the Gloucester Point area and then the northern end of uh, more rural areas of the county Again, the preservation goals were not just related to historic, but there was a lot of discussion in the plan. There's a list of what people liked about the, 
courthouse and you know kind of keeping it the way it is keeping the character of the of the community it's a very eclectic downtown and then we have out the outsides of the downtown it's kind of different areas from the Fox Mill Center to you know some of the parks we have and some of the older shopping centers so you know trying to um, work towards keeping the community uh, character of the courthouse area um, this was probably the biggest one the economic vitality goals in the in the plan there is a vision statement that kind of talks about it being a vibrant uh, community in downtown you know talks about expanding tourism a big thing about diversity in housing types to try to you know get more types of people that are going to come here spend time and money in the county um, expand the economic base again more types of businesses more jobs for people and uh, to foster a land use pa pattern that meets the current and future um, needs of the community when we were looking at some of the ideas um, that came out of the public meetings, we kind of identified three um, economic activity nodes. Again, you have your, your Main Street area, which is kind of that long, skinny thing, and then the um, shopping center where the food line is, which I always forget the name of, and uh, then the Fox Mill Center, kind of two larger, more uh, auto-oriented economic areas. And then we have like the Crab Thicket, Thicket area um, right now. It just can, has a convenience store, but Brown Park is there, and that is a potential uh, economic activity area at the Main Street Center. And then um, the old Walmart site, the um, shops at Gloucester, has some potential for increased economic activity. I'm just going to run through the future land use uh, map that came out of this plan. But again, you, you look at some of the commercial areas that I just identified. And then the idea was to try to support that commercial area with um, different residential type development and infill. So, so that's the different designations are similar to uh, zoning or land use designations, but more specific to the courthouse area. So the historic Main Street mixed use, again, is, uh, you know, trying to allow infill development within the courthouse area. Um, so, you, you know, you have on the left the current um, situation, and then to the right is just a rendering of what you could see with the apartments above and infilling some of the vacant areas, um, vacant uh, sites in the, in the courthouse. And there is a description of each of these in the plan, so I'm not going to read it. I'm just going to try to summarize it for you. The business mixed use area, this is kind of the existing areas we have on 17 and the Route 17 Highway Corridor. It's currently already zoned for business and adjacent to business. It tends to be auto-oriented, but we're trying to make it, you know, a little more pedestrian or available to pedestrians and cyclists. So as we're looking at updating our ordinances, these are some of the things we might consider in this area. Um, the Boulevard Mixed Use District, this uh, came out of a lot of discussions with the steering committee and, and public input, but as you enter into the um, village area, the traditional downtown, to kind of have a, a different streetscape that says, hey, you're entering into a different type of place. So it's kind of the transition from the highway business to the village area. Again, this is more pedestrian oriented, um, not as villagey in terms of the setbacks aren't as close to the road, but um, it, it provides a different type of environment that allows for commercial and residential development, but the scale is a little different than your traditional downtown. And these are on the gateways to the courthouse um, along 14 and business 17 and um, the northern end of, of seven, uh, business 17. The traditional village mixed infill is kind of the area around um, Main Street that has a lot of existing development, but there's still some vacant lands there. So you know, filling in with some duplexes or single family homes that are in keeping with the character of the existing community, but taking a chance, uh, taking um, an opportunity to develop a little more density in those areas. Mixed residential expansion. These are kind of the areas outside. There are the light green on the map. And these are really not one size fit all, you know, and they don't have to develop at all if, if not. But if they do develop that we're looking for um, some, again, communities that support that connectivity, that, um, you know, add to the commercial cores that we talked about earlier. Um, a good example of this is uh, where the Burley Road area is. That may never develop, you know, it's really up to a private developer. Um, but if it does develop, we're trying to keep that boulevard kind of green space and inside have it be walkable connecting to some of the other areas that are adjacent to it. So again, those connectivities and density and walkability in any new development. The um, neighborhood uh, stabilization and infill and the neighborhood stabilization, these are the existing subdivisions that are already there. 
Um, there might be some chance for infill, but mostly, you know, like Ladies Mead and uh, Dunstan Hall, some of the, um, you know, developments right here around the courthouse that are already pretty much built out, and, you know, they might allow for some redevelopment, but they're pretty stable, and, you know, really just leave those as it is and the zoning the way it is now. Uh, this is just kind of an idea of some of the concepts that we talked about. Um, again, this is the Main Street Center and one of our, our challenging intersections, and there's the Edge Hill Shopping Center. And um, this tends to be the, the auto-oriented part of the, um, of the county, and we have some issues with congestion. And so this was kind of like ideas for thinking outside the box and creating new connections. Again, this would involve a major public-private partnerships with, you know, uh, somebody redeveloping a shopping center, creating new roads. Um, so it's a pretty out there concept, but it's not totally unthinkable if we work with partners, if somebody came in and wanted to redevelop something and, and you know, we, we created some of those partnerships. I do want to bring up, um, we were hoping VDOT is doing a study of the corridor, again, just uh, Business 17. Um, I met with some VDOT staff today. Uh, they have some ideas, or they're looking at seven different intersections on, on Main Street, including the one at uh, 3 and 14. And um, we'll probably be looking for a public hearing soon on, those, on their results that they found. Uh, we had hoped that it would be concurrent with this plan, but it wasn't. So hopefully um, we, we have shared this plan with them, and when it gets finalized, we will ask them to take it into consideration with their efforts. So in conclusion, the plan is um, the next step in enhancing the courthouse. Uh, it's been a wonderful partnership with the Main Street Preservation Trust. And I really want to thank them um, and Jenny Crittenden for all their help. You know, we had the meetings at their place, and uh, they, they provided food for our public meetings, which is something the county never does. So um, it, it has been wonderful. And, um, you know, it was brought up several times the need to redo our ordinances. Uh, the business focus group meeting last Wednesday really, I think, um, supported the recommendations in this plan of trying to rewrite the ordinance to allow certain types of development, which are currently not permitted. There was a lot of discussion about parking. This plan talks about parking, but also as we increase the vitality of these areas, we're going to have to, you know, parking is a perceived problem right now. I, I would argue that it's not a big problem, but, you know, you can't always park where you want in front of a business. So these are some of the challenges we're going to have as the plan moves forward. But I think you kind of want to have a vibrant downtown and a parking problem, knowing that your economy is doing well and your, your businesses are being supported. So, of course, staff recommends that, um, the board uh, adopts this plan um, after hearing input tonight. Um, the Planning Commission also recommended, we had several speakers, several steering committee members spoke as well. Unfortunately, we didn't have a, a good turnout at the last meeting. We have two new members that were um, yet to be uh, um, sworn in, and then um, so it was unanimous, but there were several missing <laughs> at, the, at the last meeting. So um, with that, I can, if you don't have any questions, we can open up for public comment. I think we'll open up for public comment first and then questions after we have the public comment. All right, well, the floor is now open for public comment. Um, if you'd like to come forward. <coughs> Madam Chairman, members of the board, I thank you for the opportunity to be able to say to you that I think there's a good plan that, in fact, has been worked out. However, as the Planning Commission pointed out, this plan cannot be implemented until you have changed your ordinances and given you the capability of being able to implement it. So what I would ask of you is to heavily consider why you've got a good plan, develop the ordinances that let you implement it, and adopt them together. You can say, well, we want to go ahead and get the plan adopted. Well, that puts the urgency on getting the ordinances prepared so that you can implement it. And the urgency of doing so is so that it doesn't hold up development along Main Street. And one of the ordinances that is going to have to be looked at and considered is the parking ordinance that I mentioned earlier, in that to implement a mixed-use plan, especially in Edge Hill Town Center, in the mid uh, street, Main Street Center, and I suggest that the uh, Southern States property because it's going to eventually change its use, this big acreage. And to me, what needs to occur is to have it so that the parking and other ordinances allow a orderly development. And it may be that in 
trying to amend your ordinances or adopt new ordinances, you have to change your plan slightly in order to be able to achieve. So I would heavily suggest, while I highly recommend a speedy adoption of the plan, but also please hold that plan adoption until you've got the ordinances and so forth to change it. We, the halls have committed to implement exactly what's been, been wanted to be accomplished here, and we're well underway. And we're in our first part of the uh, re re making the Edge Hill Shopping Center. We've got us a new name, Edge Hill Town Center. And we started work there, but we run into a problem with the parking. And we're dead in the water until that issue is in fact resolved and you all take a look at it. We can't add one square foot or do any change beyond the existing footprint until that one area is addressed. And there are other parts of the ordinances that in fact are affected. So the urgency and the importance of looking at the ordinances are important. And as I mentioned earlier, I wanted to qualify my ability to present the parking thing, but I believe that in fact a good way to do it is to join together with the three owners and in fact try to come to you with a plan as to a ratio of parking to the mixed use and then let the development be built towards what that parking requirements are. The current issue of Route 14 that Ms. Ortiz mentioned briefly, on the Foster uh, report it says, most importantly, any development in the area which ha would have to be contingent upon solving the current traffic problems at the intersection of Business 17 and Route 14. And on the current report on page 44, it addresses the fact that there are problems at Route 14 and uh, Main Street. The suggestion, I believe, is that in fact there should be a, an attempt to arrive at an interim plan that would solve the problem and to have that plan presented to you all for of approval or denial and let it be the guidelines as to how it could be developed around. Trying to have each individual developer to solve that problem at 14 and Main Street can't be done by any one person and, or any one owner, and I believe there's a way to achieve it by working together. The other part I'd like to comment on, the crab ticket and business 14, or route 14. Uh, Mr. Alfred, if yes. you could just tie it up, you've hit yes, five minutes. So. The route, crab ticket in route 14 is a node that in fact has been mentioned, I think, to con give consideration extending sewer and water up to the only inductive zone property up there would be a wise thing. I thank okay. you. Oh, I'm sorry. If you could state your name officially for the oh, record, sorry. I apologize. I Walt Alford and representing with the halls on the Ware District. Yeah. I'm sorry. Well, I apologize. I should have caught that too. All right. So, anyone else who wishes to come forward and speak? Good evening, Madam Chairwoman and members of the board. My name is Jenny Crittenden, and I am the executive director for the Gloucester Main Street Preservation Trust. It is a pleasure for me to be able to stand here after a year's worth of planning um, and presenting and encourage the adoption of this plan tonight. Um, this plan is a strong plan and it not only will take Main Street but the entire Courthouse Village area in a very positive direction over the next 20 years, addressing future land use, economic development, historic preservation and environmental concerns are all components of the plan. This process has been very inclusive as well, including a cross-section of citizens on the steering committee, as well as reaching out to the greater community through public forums, individual stakeholder meetings, as well as the hard work of staff here from the county, as well as members of my own board at the Main Street Preservation Trust. The interactive style of the meetings and forums, in my opinion, has really led to a community-driven product. The Main Street Preservation Trust has and will continue to invest in Main Street, and its businesses. From building a strong economic base for business to thrive, whether it's through workshops, assistance, education, to beautification and preservation efforts, we continue to be sensitive to the historical nature while preparing for the downtown's future growth. We believe this plan is in line with our mission as it will create a more flexible business environment, allowing more uses and encouraging the growth of business in downtown living that so many communities are offering now. We are aware, very aware, that the work does not end here, but that is 
still work to be done, considerations for new ordinances to be put in place. We know it's the last piece of this puzzle that will allow many of the opportunities in this plan to be able to come to fruition. But this is the first step, preparing the plan, adopting it as a sub-plan tonight to the comprehensive plan. We trust that you too see the importance of this and will give your support this evening. Let me once again say that it's been a great pleasure to work and serve on the committee to work again with Gloucester County and its staff, and it's been extremely rewarding to see the involvement of our citizens as we plan for the future. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else who wishes to come forward and speak? Nathan Brown from the Ware District. I don't think you should adopt this plan. Number one, the plan is too, covers too large of an area and encompasses too many diverse areas of the county. When you think, when people think of Gloucester Village, they think of the village around Main Street. They don't think of Walmart or Tractor Supply being in the village. They're, it's a totally different idea out there. I mean, they're, they're 17 definitely driven, you know, drive-in businesses where the village businesses are totally different as far as attracting customers and doing. I can't see how you can incorporate them in the same plan. You have to have different ideas for different areas. You know, it's just like you don't see that around here, but in a lot of places, when you talk about villages, you move from areas to areas, and they're different villages, and you might move from one, one town or village right into another one, but there, it's a totally different town or village. And Gloucester Cordo's area is the same thing. You know, when you go to different areas, I mean, like Riverside Hospital is almost their own little village up there. And they have a totally different idea and they do totally different things. So we can't integrate all these people into one plan. You need to, to make the scope smaller. So if Main Street, the, develop a Main Street plan and then develop plans for other areas. In addition, you know, this... This plan doesn't really cover a lot of things. That we, they keep talking about interconnectivity, but the problem is there's no interconnectivity because this area is cut off by four-lane highways. There's no interconnectivity unless a four, across a four-lane highway unless you're going to build an overpass. It just doesn't really happen, not on a walking basis. So if you really want to interconnect these areas, you're going to have to find somewhere else to do it. And we, the other problem we have in this area is there's no... There's no, you know, if you talk about the village itself, we have no real government for the village, and we have no funding source for the government, for, this, for the village. You know, we, we collect money for street lights, and any time there's this extra money in this for the street light fund, you also take that and put it in the utilities fund instead of trying to improve the street lights in the courthouse. So you have to have some kind of, of some kind of money because you can't be taking money from you know other areas of the county and constantly bringing it into the village to fund things like new sidewalks new street lights and there's not always going to be some grant to pay for them sometimes people that live here are going to have to pay for these things so you have to think about if you're going to have a village you have to have a sanitary district and use that taxing power to pay for those things like street lights sidewalks some of these bike trails, all these things get built, but somebody's got to come along and maintain them. And there has to be a funding source of that. And the third thing that really wasn't addressed in this plan that you need to really think about is internet connectivity. You know, the, the, they started at one time to extend Wi-Fi all over Main Street. We need to continue that. We need to make Gloucester Courthouse Wi-Fi available anywhere in the courthouse so people, people can connect into it at all times. Anywhere you walk up down Main Street, you should be able to connect into the Wi-Fi system seamlessly so people have that availability. Everybody has smartphones and tablets, so if you had that Wi-Fi connection, they could have an app on their tablet and instantly connect to all the businesses in the courthouse as they walk down the street from one app. Now, they don't have to have one for each business. It would just be an app. So th there's a lot of things that it doesn't address. That's very, you know, as the world changes, things have to change with them. The other thing that's not really addressed, and not, not anywhere in Gloucester, is, is real high-speed Internet. There's no real high-speed Internet thing, you know. The Cox and Verizon call what they have high-speed Internet, but there's no high, real high-speed Internet available. 
If we could find an area, uh, area in this courthouse and provide that, we could bring people in here that really want really high-speed Internet. You know, everybody thinks about quaint little shops, but the future, a lot of it, for a lot of businesses now, is totally Internet-based. They don't need a storefront. They need an area where they can work and have interconnection to the world. So I think the, the plan is too big, and it really misses a lot of points that would really help Gloucester Cordo develop. Thank you. All right, is there anyone else who wishes to comment? <laughs> Madam Chair, members of the board, Howard Mowry, Gloucester Point. This proposal has much promise if it were expanded to where those being affected had control of their own destiny. When you review the mass of territory involved in the size of the development district, one needs to ask the question, why don't we become self-governing? This district has the opportunity to become an incorporated town within itself. Documentation is archived where in the past the town of Body Tot was conceived. Consider its own mayor, council, various departments, and the ability to reach out and collect federal and state revenue for improvements within town limits. Having taxing authority, a boon. And do not forget possibly have some say in the Big Brother umbrella that hangs over our heads known as Agenda 21. The citizens need to consider what path they want to travel. Does the entire county mass need to pay with taxes the revitalization of this area is short, or should it be limited to only those individuals wrapped into the development district and the sub-area plan? Tabling would not hurt while the affected citizens determine if there's a better way to improve upon their well-being without raising taxes on the mass to benefit a few. One must believe expansion comes at a cost that few can reap a harvest from and enjoy. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak? Madam Chairman and Board, <clears throat> I'm Ellis Hall, and I just went through an experience <clears throat> that if I hadn't had a good heart, <clears throat> I'd have been gone, I believe. And I know that I'm an old man. <clears throat> But I've been here for 94 years. I've been in business for almost 65 years, right here in Gloucester, Dakota. I don't begrudge your responsibility that you have as the Board of Supervisors. But I feel like some of the things that we've had to go through what we are doing, we, are, we feel like that we are adding to the... Mr. Hall, I did, if you could just of, relate this to the actual public hearing. You're talking on a specific project. Just, it's, I beg your pardon? We just need you to speak to the public hearing that's going on. You're, at the moment, you're just talking about... I'm not very good at speaking. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> when I get up, I leave it in my seat. So I just want to say for the future of Gloucester County, <clears throat> when somebody comes in and has something, a plan, I don't know what you have to go through because I'm not computerized, but it looks like to me it takes an awful lot length of time to get something approved. I haven't got anything wrong to uh, say about how it's done other than it just takes a lot of time and very frustrating. And I think <clears throat> that the people coming in could be very easily discouraged. And if you want the county to grow, maybe you have to put up with some of the things that Maybe you don't have to follow the dotted line all the way, but sometimes I feel like that you need to give a little concession to somebody that's been here, been a citizen for years, and that was my disappointment. I guess I expected 
a little bit more uh, cordially. But not saying, you've been very good. And she's met with us every time that I, we have asked her. And so I want to thank you for that. And Ben, I'm sorry that you <laughs> you were leaving because I think it's a lot of responsibility. <clears throat> And thank you. Thank you, sir. All right, is there anyone else who wishes to come? Uh, members of the board, Ms. Gardner, Mr. Wilmot, Don Mitchell, York District. A um, couple of things sort of strike me about this, but the starting point, um, Mr. Mowry referenced the gorilla that's going to eat the United States and the rest of the world, Agenda 21. And I know you hate that term, and I know you don't like the fact that we're going to mention it, but that's what this is. That's what planning effort is. Planning is about people who are not willing to spend the money to buy nor the money to pay taxes on property, telling other people what they should do with their property. And for that reason, I find it objectionable. There was a movie when I was a kid growing up. It was a science fiction movie. The title was The Blob That Ate New York. And somehow Gloucester Village now is going to become the blob that's expanding all the way to the Ware River on one side. And there was a very interesting part of the slideshow before. And the interesting part of the slideshow said, and you know, down here in Belvoir now, we don't know if anybody's going to, but if any developer ever wants to come in and do anything, boy, we want to be sure we've got him tied down. <coughs> This is the same night when you hear people talking about we're going to be f more friendly to business. Come on, folks, get it together. Get it together. You want to be friendly to business. You don't dot every I, as this gentleman just said. You don't cross every T. You don't foreclose every option. And you're sure as hell don't take property owners that live 10 miles from your village and tell them, oh, you're now a part of the village and you're going to be a privilege to all this. I like Mr. Mowry's suggestion, set up a separate district, set up a, a legally established village, let them have their own tax base, let them spend their own money on the things that they want to do. That's it. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else who wishes to come forward and speak this evening? Last call. Anyone else wish to come forward? Seeing none, public comment is now closed on the courthouse village sub-area plan. Are there any questions from board members, from Ms. Ducey Ortiz, or any staff? All right, folks, we have a resolution beginning on pay, or a resolution on page uh, 212 that would just add this to our comp plan. And so I would accept a motion for that resolution. All right, there's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? All right, there's a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion of the motion? Seeing none, Ms. Garton, would you poll the board, please? Mr. Orth? Yes. Ms. LaBerge? Yes. Mr. Norstein? Yes. Mr. James? Yes. Mr. Hudson? Yes. Mr. Crisco? Yes. Mr. Borden? Yes. It's a 7-0. Okay. Thank you very much.